The children of promise. We are children of the promise. The promise is to the spiritual man, the spiritual person that we are. Once we realize that we are on a wonderful victorious journey into the city of God. For years I never felt worthy, so I couldn't receive the promise. I couldn't believe that God would bless me if I didn't stop sinning. Look what the law says. In Deuteronomy 26 it says, If you do all that I tell you to do, and you keep all my commandments and you are good, you will be blessed. There are about 15 verses of blessings if you obey. But if you disobey and break the law you are guilty of all, then you get 50 some verses of cursing that comes on you. Praise the Lord for Galatians 3 verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Could that really mean what it says? It means, when I miss God, if I fall into sin, if I get into lust, whatever happens to me, I don't get the curse of the law. God is going to bless me, no matter what I do. Now his blessing may be the severity of his correction so I am not making this, greasy grace, or, sloppy agape. However God will bless you with whatever it takes to cause you to realize that you need him. That is real grace. Grace doesn't mean that you can live any way you want to without consequences. When you understand the cross and the magnitude of Calvary's victory you will truly experience grace. Grace means divine enablement. Once you really understand the grace of God, and even if you are living a life of sin and disobedience, God is still, and will continue to deal with you until you understand His grace. And when you understand His grace is divine enablement that enables you, as Paul says in Romans 8, to fulfill all the righteous requirements of the law. The righteous requirements of the law are not the law of Moses, they are love the Lord with your heart, your soul, and your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. If we would forget every law and stop living by good and evil and just focus on loving God and loving our neighbor, Jesus said that would fulfill all the law, because if you love like that, you wouldn't steal from your neighbor you wound not commit adultery or violate love in any way. Living by love is not a performance it is your inward nature. Religion has made living for God a performance. When I was in Pentecost, in some churches you couldn't dance, you couldn't chew, you couldn't go to movies, you couldn't have a television in your house. You have all these desires, but you push them all down because you think you shouldn't have them. That is bondage. That is not liberty. It is bondage. Liberty is when you have the freedom to do anything you want to do, but you just don't want to do certain things, that is freedom. I don't smoke now, not because I feel it is wrong, I just don't want to. And I find that whatever I do want to do, I have the liberty to do it. One of the first things I was told when I went into Pentecost was that you couldn't drink anymore, so I went home, and I dumped all my liquor down the drain. I never drank much, but I used to come home from work at night and have a couple of drinks, but when I was told it was wrong, I didn't take a drink for years. One day I realized, what is wrong with having a drink when I come home from work? What is wrong with having a beer? We had put ourselves in so much bondage thinking that our performance will gain us an entrance into the kingdom, and our performance is what hinders us from entering the kingdom, because a life of walking in the kingdom is a life of walking in love and liberty, 